Hi, right, good morning, y'all. Welcome back to Panama City. Today is Friday, February the 17th, I think. Yeah, February the 17th. Um, it is windy. It is nasty. Um, wind's blowing about 20 out of the west northwest. Um, the bay is chopped up and white capping. This is nasty. Uh, it's already rained on me twice, and um, we're expecting a little bit more rain, and then hopefully it'll clear up. You know, I don't know. We're just going to go fishing and see. I was wanting to go out to um, the St. Andrews State Park, but um, uh, St. Andrews Bay looks like a washing machine. I mean, it's just ugly. But um, we're just going to fish for a little while. I did stop and buy some um, some shrimp at Pier 98. So I do have shrimp. I've got my regular frozen bait, squid, cigar minnows, stuff like that. Um, so we're just going to fish and see if we can if we can catch anything. Uh, who knows? The water temperature's not bad. It's 63.7 degrees, so almost 64 degrees. So the bay's warming up nice. Um, the red snapper should start moving in to uh, spawn in the next month or so. So I'm not expecting to catch a lot of um, big red snapper. But can't keep them until the middle of June anyway or around that. But um, not a lot of boats out on the water today, obviously. Um, the, the mercury test boats are out. I think they're always out. It doesn't matter. But um, we're just going to go fishing and see what we can catch. I pulled up in here in a pocket trying to get out of the wind a little bit, but I don't know that it's going to be helpful. The wind is just everywhere right now. The spot I'm sitting on is just an area that looks like it's a, it's a live bottom. I'm not seeing fish and bait or anything like that, but you know, who knows, there may be some here. Snapper. I'll show you what I'm seeing on the depth finder. So that's the, the live bottom right there. These are fish. That's kind of what it looks like on my depth finder. Yeah, I'm in 31, 32 feet of water. <clears throat> it's not high relief. It's just a, a yellow line on the bottom because of the way I've got my depth finder set up. But there's fish here right now. So. Yeah, Never. A lot of chums here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and cut up some chum and throw it out. See if I can get anything else to come in. That one's close to a keeper. Now 
Well, there's obviously red snapper here, and um, they're not in season. The wind's blowing hard and bouncing, so we're going to move and try someplace else. We're in 40 feet of water here, and um, what I've got is the pipeline is right behind the boat. So we're sitting on the upcurrent side of it, with the tide's going in. It's not a strong tide this morning, it's just a little bit of tide. Another decent snapper. Good snapper. Snapper. Although I'm not fishing for red snapper right now specifically, um, the type of fishing that I do lends itself to catching red snapper. Um, I like hard bottom or rock or structure of some kind. I'm fishing with cut bait or live bait. I'm fishing on the bottom or close to the bottom. That's how you catch red snapper. I don't care if you go offshore or, or inshore. That's how you catch red snapper. At least that's how I catch them. But I also catch grouper. I catch black sea bass. I catch trout, white trout or um, sand trout. Um, you know, I catch sharks. I catch catfish, unfortunately. But, uh, I catch a variety of fish because of the way I fish. If you want speckled trout, you know, keeper-sized redfish, um, I don't fish for them. I, I just, I don't fish for them. I catch big red, big redfish. And you, I've got a video a couple of, a couple of weeks ago where I caught one that was real nice. I catch them here on the pipeline. I catch them around the bridges. Um, I catch them on the structure. Next summer, we'll see if we can catch some on top water with um, crabs. Um, they'll come up and eat the crabs, the past crabs as they swim out. They'll come up and eat them right off the surface in 50 feet of water. So, um, I like fishing in the bay. I like going offshore. Don't get me wrong. But what I fish for offshore is things like trigger fish, um, bee liners, vermilion snapper, um, big mangroves. I caught a 22 inch mangrove out there last summer. Um, I, I don't fish for those inshore because I don't have them inshore. We can catch mangroves in here, but the biggest mangrove I've caught in the bay is 15 inches. I don't catch big mangroves in the bay. Offshore, I catch those big ones. So I, I like fishing Panama City and I like fishing right offshore of Panama. Big ruby redlets. It's a grunt. And they're good to eat. I 
I'll catch whatever bites. I've got them from 15 pounds, 20 pounds. I've got some 30 pounds. Um, if I'm fishing for a grouper or, or if I'm trying to catch those big redfish, I'll probably use the 30 pound most of the time. And I don't use a lot of big heavy terminal gear, gear either. I've got a three quarter ounce weight, just a slip sinker, and a five watt Mustad Demon Perfect Circle hook. Now if I'm fishing for the triggers and the um, uh, bee liners, then I'll drop down to a two watt uh, Demon Perfect Circle. Same size weight. Or lighter, I'll go to a lighter weight. Because I don't typically catch them on the bottom. They'll be, you know, if I'm in 70, 75 feet of water, they'll be, you know, 35, 40 feet down. And so I don't need to get all the way to the bottom. Giant snapper. <laughs> and that's a giant red snapper. See how long he is. He's 24 inches. So that's about the average that we catch when we're trying to catch keepers. Season's close, so I can't keep him. But now he definitely laid me open a little bit. But I just I took one of the pin fish that I caught, cut it in half, put it on that rod, and just dropped it to the bottom. He ate it. Wind's blowing a little bit. A decent little red snapper. I'll show you what I'm looking at on the bottom so you can kind of have an understanding. So, this is just the bottom. And you don't see the. Um, the pipeline because it's behind me. This is all bait and fish. So, you know, I'm fishing high relief structure, and by high relief, it's probably two or three feet above the bottom. Um, but I'm not fishing directly on top of it. Can't even keep my hat on. Nice to be red lips. Alright, well we stop down here at Duncan Bridge and I'm on the south side of the pass where you go underneath the bridge, the center of it. And um, there's a big wreck here that's right up against the uh, foundations from the old bridge that used to be here. And uh, I think it was last week or the week before, I caught a big redfish here. Um, 
because it was a week before. Last week, um, I had um, DJ with me, and we fished over over there and underneath the bridge. It's pouring rain, and we caught just a boatload of um, white trout. Um, white trout are up in here to spawn, uh, so uh, they tend to get piled up when they're when they're getting ready to spawn. So we're just gonna fish here for a few minutes and see what we can catch. So that that's the the bottom. This is all part of that wreck. All that up in here. And my depth finder is looking through the wreck. And the fish are swimming in it and out of it and on it and around it. In short, the mangroves only have to be 10 inches to keep them. That one's over 10. Not looking to keep any today. So it looks like the only thing biting right now is these little mangroves. So I'm gonna call it a day. Wind's bad, it's starting to cool off or get cold. Um, I'll be back out here tomorrow. I appreciate y'all joining me. Hope you learned something. If you like the video, hit the like button. Um, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. Hit the bell, and it'll notify you when I release videos. Um, I appreciate it, and we'll see you tomorrow.